Hey everybody, it's Jade. Um, I wanted to make a video breaking down um, the US 30 trades that we've taken in the VIP signal room in the last three months. And by we, I mean me. Um, these are the calls, the, the trades that I call out in my signal room for my students. Um, and I wanted to break them down and explain pretty much the reason that I took these trades and uh, what I was thinking uh, when I took these trades. So let's start with, um, there's a lot of different trades that I was taking, but let's start with this one right here. So uh, this is back in June. This is the 30th of June. Now that I'm looking back at this, I'm pretty sure that the reason that I took this trade is because of this horizontal level right here um, at the 24,750 level. And um, I just, if we go on the daily time frame, I can tell that I was pretty much um, watching this level right here and waiting for price to break up above that level right and if for whoever doesn't know uh dow jones is uh this is the dow jones right so us 30 is um an index in the stock market and that just means that it's uh pretty much like a group of um of different companies in the in the stock market there's the dow jones there's nasdaq there's um uh, uh s p 500 right i like to trade us 30 just because um i don't know it just moves a lot better based on uh what it is that i like uh when i'm trading based on my trad my strategy right so um what i was looking at was obviously we're in a very clear uptrend right so we saw that uh in february um right before COVID hit um this pretty much took a huge huge dive all the way down to 18,400 which is crazy right 18,000 just about 18,220 um, and then turned around uh, the 23rd of March right and we began this uptrend at this level down here the level that we began the uptrend that isn't really important but um, it is important to understand uh, when a new trend is happening Right, so we know that from here, right, to here, right, that's a downtrend, right? Pretty much a downtrend. Disregard this part over here, but this is a downtrend. We go down, we go up, right, we make a lower high, we come down, we make a lower low, right, we go up, we make a lower high, lower low, right? So we see that we're downtrending. I wasn't trading it at that time. But the reason that I knew that this was on an uptrend is because from here, we started making higher highs and higher lows, right? So we began to find very strong resistance at this level here at about 24,750 or 790, right? And this was a very interesting level for me. So once we broke past that, right, on the daily and the four hour, because I usually trade on the daily and the four hour, uh, as you can tell, we came down here, but we didn't come down enough and retest this level enough for me to be able to take any, um, any trades from this specific level here, right? So what ended up happening here is that I was taking other trades here based on the upward momentum, but it wasn't really any long-term daily trades, right? If I was taking, um, you know, if I was taking a daily trade off of that level, it would have looked a lot, a lot different, right? We would have been going for the difference between uh, a trade from the on the on the daily time frame and a trade on the hourly time frame is that you're going to be reaching for a lot more pips right your stop loss is going to be bigger your take profits are going to be larger right there's a lot of there's you have to understand um what time frame your analysis is on that's very important right if you're analyzing on the 15 minute right on the on the 30 minute your trades are going to be 
smaller, but it doesn't mean that they're going to be less powerful, right? This is a very um, broad topic. Um, it gets very complicated, but pretty much what I mean is that um, pips are not the only thing that matters when you're taking a trade, and that's very important for people to understand. What does that mean? Well, um, I, if I take a trade on the daily time frame, right, and if I take a trade on the 15-minute, right, like I'm going to show you, like my last trade over here that I'm going to show you at the end of this video was a trade that I took on the 15-minute, and that one made me more profit percentage-wise than most of these trades that you see here, or probably all of these trades that you see here on the larger time frames, which are the four hour, the daily, the weekly, right? The reason for that is because really your profitability is based off of your risk reward ratio for on, on each trade, right? So if I'm taking, and, and, and another thing is when you're taking trades on smaller time frames, your stop loss can be smaller right so and, and that makes your your um risk reward ratio bigger larger right so um i typically uh only take trades if they're about uh two to one risk reward ratio right so if we're risking a hundred bucks um it's to make 200 bucks or more right so i'm not going to go too much into that this video is about uh these these trades um and the 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 thinking behind these trades so, all right, so we, we're on a clear uptrend, right? And then we find this key level of resistance here at this level over here. And I already know that I'm waiting for something significant to happen at this level, right? I pretty much base my trades off of horizontal support and resistance, right? But it has to be key levels of horizontal support and resistance, right? And then I use different things for confluence, like an EMA, which is this green thing that you see here, um, and, uh, right, and, and trending markets and, uh, you know, reversal patterns and, um, you know, trend lines and counter trend lines and a bunch of different stuff. But I also use fundamental news as confluence as well. But um, yeah, so I saw this level of resistance. We broke above it finally around May 26, right? And then we go all the way up here and then we finally start to come down, right? And once we came down, we retested this level, right? But not only did we retest that level, we had this Fibonacci retracement level here, the 61.8. If you notice, we bounced off of this level right here um not only was that the horizontal resistance that we were waiting to get broken out of and then when it got broken out of we were waiting for that retest to come back down since this thing is still uptrending right and most likely when something is trending in a certain direction it's most likely going to continue that trend for a while that's the reason that trend trading is so powerful right and that's exactly how i trade that's my entire strategy is to to, to trade trends right so um, once we bounced off of that level and we saw this upward momentum, I knew that, uh, you know, that we were going to, uh, continue to uptrend on the larger, on the larger scale, right? On a larger scale. So what happened? Uh, you know, I caught some trades going up. You see this trade that I took over here, but I really want to break down this trade because this was a, you know, a larger time frame trade. So the reason behind this trade right here was that we bounced off of this key level of uh, it was resistance in the past right now it's support right we made this huge huge bull run to the upside started coming back down we were really bouncing inside of this um, I guess you can call it a triangle pattern right and so Really, I should have taken this trade right here, to be honest. I should have taken this trade right there. Um, my trade would have looked something like this if I would have got in uh, where I wanted to. So this trade would have looked something like that, right? Uh, maybe we could have taken this. Maybe I would have tried to go this high, obviously, because we see structure here to the left, and that's as high as it went. 
So when the trade was happening, yeah, I definitely expected this thing to go to the moon, uh, but I didn't expect it to start consolidating um, and then break up later on. Not every trade is going to hit your, your final take profit level. And this is why you have to, uh, you have to understand um, when to, you know, um, once you see, pretty much once you see this, uh, this start to happen, once you see price start to make this downtrend, uh, this downtrend, this counter trend, pretty much downward, uh, is when you want to pretty much take profit, even though you're not all the way to your ultimate take profit level. Another thing is, I personally am not a, I don't like, I don't love to swing trade. If I do swing trade, it's only a, uh, maybe like a couple of days or a few days long. Um, I'm not a big fan of trying to reach for uh, 3,000 pips and, and an insane number of pips. Why? Well, look at this. Look at this. Look at this uh, risk reward ratio. We're here reaching for 1,661 pips with this trade, right? This is an imaginary trade that I just made up right now, right? But let's look at this for a second. Right, um, we would enter somewhere around here. Why? Because the bullish momentum was so strong off of this level, off of this zone, it just skyrocketed from that level so fast that you really, really, and it's funny because we actually, I actually did take a trade from like down here and we held it pretty long. Um, I think I probably exited somewhere around there, but um. So yeah, your risk reward ratio just because you're take just because you're reaching for uh, 1661 pips, right? Doesn't mean that you're making more money necessarily. Why? Well, because if your stop loss is at 585 pips, then really your lot size has to be a lot smaller to justify this trade. Why? Because you always want to keep your trades at the same percent risk. What does that mean? That means me personally, I only risk 1% per trade. Why? Because if I lose a trade, it's not going to kill me. It's not going to destroy my account. Right? It'll take 100 consecutive losses in order for me to completely lose my entire account. Right? At 1%. Right? It'll actually take a lot more because... You know, the more money you lose, the smaller that that one percent becomes of your actual account size, right? It's complicated, but that's the idea. Is is that my win rate is about sixty percent, sixty five percent, right? And that's actually a, a great uh, win rate, especially when you're risking one uh, percent to make two percent, three percent, four percent, or more on on your trades, right? So. This is what I'm trying to explain is that just because you made 100, 1,060 and 600 pips on a trade, if you're trading the right way, it doesn't mean that you're that you're making more money than somebody else that made 100 pips, right? Because if somebody is risking 10 pips to make 100 pips profit, they're making more profit than you risking 585 pips to make 1,661 pips. Do you understand what I'm saying? This is a very, very important thing to understand. Extremely important, right? So what I'm saying is just because you trade on a, on, a, on a bigger time frame does not mean that you make more money. Another thing is, actually, I don't like trading on huge time frames because I, I make more money trading on the, the one hour, the four hour than to trade on the daily, the weekly, the monthly, right? It's, it's, it's a very important thing to remember, to understand, and to keep in mind when you're trading. So this trade over here, um, why did I take this trade? Well, it's very simple. We bounced off of this support, right, that was previously resistance in the past. Um, it, it, this this, this uh, support level has been building up for a, a couple of months, right, since June. So June, July, May, right? So um, we took this trade. Um, so it bounced actually just a month, just a month. So, so we, once we saw this bounce upward, right? Um, remember we're on an uptrend. We see a low here 
we see a higher low here made, right? And we see pretty much price break this this level, right? So I'm looking at this level over here, right? So counter trend lines are one of my favorite uh, tools to use as confluence because um, once a trend line gets broken out of, most likely price is going to continue in that direction, in that new direction, right? You notice price was downtrending in a counter trend, downtrending downward, and then once it broke out of this counter trend line, it the trend changed and it began trending upward, right? And continuing with the main overall trend, right? That's the reason that I love using counter trend lines so much is because they help you identify where trend reversals are most likely going to happen, right? So we see that we had this low over here and then price went up and it came down and then we made this higher low here and that's pretty much where I entered, right? Bouncing off of that 200 EMA, right? We went up and... Uh, yeah, this was a great trade. This was a great trade. Um, the problem, my mistake that I made here is that my stop loss was way too big. That's that's the mistake that I made there. Uh, 440, 448 uh, pip stop loss, right? To make 962 pips. That's a, a great risk reward ratio, right? Because we have a 2.15 to 1 risk reward ratio, which is great. But it could have been a lot better. That's something that I've gotten a lot better um, over the last couple of months is um, you don't have to keep your stop loss so big. You know, like and now I would honestly keep my stop loss actually below the EMA, below wherever I entered that trade, right? So we enter because I'm always buying at lows and I'm selling at highs, right? That's how my strategy works, right? So we bought at this low right and we were expecting price to continue in this uptrend right so nowadays i would have pretty much had this stop loss down here around 125 pips right um that would have allowed me to make 7.7 percent profit on this trade instead of two percent do you see the power in that right the smaller that you can reasonably keep your stop loss the more money you make that's how this works right? Why? Because you're risking 1% no matter the stop loss, right? If the stop loss is 500 pips, you're still risking 1%. If the stop loss is 200 pips, you're still risking 1%. But what does that do for your risk reward ratio? It makes it go up. It makes it larger the smaller the stop loss. So you end up making more profit percentage-wise when the stop loss is smaller, even though you're still risking the same percentage. It's a very, this is a, I'm telling you, this is a very complex um, breakdown of these trades. You guys have to take notes and um, and make sure you're understanding this, right? So this is that trade, right? Now let's move on to, uh, I'll skip these trades. I mean, I'll tell you this trade. So this this trade right here, um, this one hit our, st our take profit. Uh, I'm not a bit, I mean, yeah, it was a good trade. It was a two to one trade. Um, very simple. We were, we were on an uptrend, right? Um, we had this trend line over here, right? We had price bounce off of, we had price bounce off of this, uh, this pretty much this Fibonacci level over here, which is, uh, What's that? Oh, no, that's not a Fibonacci level. Um, that's actually just a key level of support and resistance, right? So um, we're uptrending, right? We make this uh, this resistance level right here. I see price bounce off of this trend line, also go up and break above this resistance level and, and form support over here for several hours, right? And then I see bullish momentum to the upside. So I enter right about here. My stop loss again was down here, 
That's something that I've been getting better at. Um, it was at 106 pips, honestly, and, I, and we were going for 216 pips profit, which we actually hit that and took, pro took some great profit on this for 2%. But um, I would make, honestly, my stop loss would have been somewhere around like 60 pips. And, and this trade would have been 3.5% uh, uh, profit instead of just 2 which if you're trading on a $100,000 account, that 1.5% profit is huge, right? That 1.5% extra profit is 1,500 extra profit in one trade that you're making, right? If you learn how to, how to keep your stop losses as reasonably small as possible, but still far away, right? that it doesn't get hit by mistake, yeah, you can you can make a lot more money on your trades, right? That's a very, very important thing to understand. So then once that hit take profit, the price came down, right? And then maybe the next day I see this, I see that we that we broke down below this uh, this trend line, right? And remember I told you whenever I see a break below a major trend line, I'm I'm expecting price to continue to, to, to change trend right to, for the tr for the trend to change right I'm expecting for the trend to change once I see a major trend line get broken out of and I have this rule where I I, I believe that the more horizontal the less diagonal that a trend line is and the more horizontal that a trend line is uh, the stronger that it is right so horizontal support and resistance are stronger than trend lines it's just a fact about trading. Horizontal support and resistance are more reliable than trend lines, right? Key horizontal support and resistance. So we see price comes down, right? We see that we have this uh, this key level of uh, support down here, right? And then uh, price goes up, right? Comes down, breaks under that, comes back up, retests that level, bounce down off of that level. So then what I do is, I take a trade right here, I enter right about there. My stop loss is right about here, which is actually a, a really good spot to have that stop loss. I could have had it a tiny bit uh, tighter, but not much tighter than that. And we were we were reaching for uh, 260 pips profit, which we, we achieved um, on that trade. And, uh, and our stop loss was at 109 pips profit. So our total risk reward ratio was 2.39 to one so we, we achieved 2.39 percent just about on that trade uh, then we move on to this next trade over here and what ended up happening here was um, uh, this was a huge trade we ended up losing a couple of trades over here because we entered too early so I was expecting price because we saw that this was a very key level we see that this is a very key level right of support and resistance over here right that's the reason that I have this big red line there and I knew that this was gonna be a very key level of support and resistance um, but the thing is I pretty much uh, entered too early I mean price was bouncing off of that level there if you see we started to uh, uh, price started to we started it started to show a little bit of divergence around here not enough uh, but a little bit of divergence over here so I was buying from here because I was expecting that to be enough of a retest of that level for us to get you know that push up that I was expecting so we lost a couple of small trades over here um, when price dipped all the way down and hit our stop loss Right, so this first dip happened, hit our stop loss. Right, we wake up the next morning, we see that it happened, and we tr we're trying to figure out what's happening now. And when I look at the daily, if you look at the daily, you see that um, uh, on the four hour, it looks like price was really bearish, right, and trying to go down. But then on the daily, you see that this level is being respected very very strongly right so that's this is why you have to analyze uh your trades on different time frames because on the four hour 
it looks bad, but on the, the on the daily, it looks incredible. To me, once I saw these large, large wicks forming on the daily, I was I was I was super confident that uh, there was so much buying power at this level here that um, buyers would be able to overpower sellers here in this area and uh, you know um, pretty much push this all the way up, right? So if we go back to the four hour. We see that um, that's exactly what ended up happening. So we had another dip, right? But remember, we also have this uh, so, uh, this um, trend line here, right? This ascending trend line, right? Price pushes all the way up, and then if you look at this candle, right? Absolutely insane, right? This is a four-hour candle, by the way. So look at these candles, and then look at these candles. And one thing that you have to pay attention to is look at this. Look at this. From here to here, right? From here to here is the same thing as from here to here. It's the same thing. But it took one, two, three, four red candles to get from here to here. But then it only took two green candles to get from here to here, which is the same distance. That's letting me know. That's reading price action and understanding there's more momentum to the upside, right? There's more buying power here at this level than there is selling power, right? Another, again, it happens again, right? We see price push back down into that level, bouncing off that trend line again, but then what happens here? It took one, two, three, four, five candles, red candles, for it to push down to that level and bounce off that trend line, but then it only took one green candle, right, to push back up. Pretty much the same amount of pips. That's letting me know that this thing is ready to go up, right? And then I also see a counter trend line right here, right? So a counter, a counter, pretty much that counter trend was happening there. So I plotted that counter trend line there because I wanted to see a break above that trend line for me to be able to enter this trade. So I entered a little bit early just because um, I was very confident once price came up like that and then came back down and retested this level and started pushing up from there. I was very, very confident in this trade. We were making a higher low right here at this level, continuing the overall uptrend. So I entered over here. This is another thing where uh, I made a huge mistake here. My stop loss should have been way smaller. So this stop loss was at 531 pips because it was a larger trade and we were aiming for uh, 1,165 pips, which we actually achieved. And it actually went way higher than that. Um, but we achieved our, our, tar our final target profit, right? Um, profit target. I don't know how to say that. But pretty much um, our, but this is what I meant by that uh, just because you're, you're profiting more pips does not mean that you're making more profit overall. Right. So um, if you're trading the right way, so you see that we're making a, the most amount of pips on this trade than any other trade. But our risk to reward ratio is only two point one nine, which is not that great for a trade of this magnitude and especially a trade that's going to take this long to play out because this took a couple of weeks. Right. So. Um, so, yeah, so what I would do today and this is just a few months ago, right, this is just. La uh, a couple of months ago, right? And I'm still, I'm always learning, I'm always growing, I'm always getting better. What I would do now is put my stop loss below this low right there, right? So I would have put my stop loss somewhere around here, and uh, we would have been able to achieve a 6.26 uh, risk reward ratio on this one. So we would have made 6.26% profit on this instead of 2.19 which is an insane, insane um, jump in profit. And this is why keeping your stop losses reasonably small is very, very important. But you have to know how to do it the right way. You really have to know how to do it the right way. If not, you're going to get, you're going to, you're pretty much going to get stopped out uh, prematurely, which is not a great thing because you don't want price to stop you out and then go directly into profit. You don't want that to happen. So, yeah, so that happened. It went up, and then when this level got broken out of, I was I was hoping price was gonna come 
a lot further down and retest this level and I would have bought from there but I never did and then finally it came down here and uh, once I saw this doji form on the four hour right at this level where I was waiting for price to turn around because it's a key level of support and resistance right on the four hour daily weekly once we got that turnaround uh, then I entered another trade over here and, uh, and again our stop loss was way too big over here way too big uh, I would have had this it was at 265 I, I would have had this at about 200 um, so at 265 uh, we were only at about uh, two percent uh, risk risk reward ratio I would have had this at 200 so that we could have had at least at least a 2.6 percent uh, risk reward ratio on that trade uh, so we profited 534 pips on that trade. That was a great trade. Then we continue to uptrend, right? And this is why I love this. My strategy is because uh, the strategy that I use, I didn't create this this strategy, right? Nobody did, uh, or whoever did, I don't know who 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 did, but it's been around for a long time. Uh, a lot of people use this strategy, but it's just the way that you use it, right? It's just about the way that you use it. So. We, uh, we see that price is still uptrending. It's still making higher lows, right? So once it breaks above this other level over here, right, breaks above this level over here, uh, we take another trade. This time, my stop loss was a lot a lot more reasonable, right? Um, uh, maybe a little bit too tight, to be honest, but uh, not the best trade. We only achieved a 1.65% profit on that one. Uh, we could have went higher. But at this time, I wasn't, uh, you know, I wasn't 100 percent sure this thing was going to keep uh, just skyrocketing. <laughs> it just kept skyrocketing from there. Right. Um, so not the best trade, but we won. We won money on that trade. Um, still, you know, a, a decent profit um, price kept uh, making higher lows and higher highs. So once we made this higher low over here, it was bouncing off of this trend line over here. Um, uh, I didn't enter down here where I wanted to because it came down price came down too low I wanted it to bounce off of this upper uh, purple level purple zone right here but um, it just it dipped down way too low so uh, I was waiting for it to come up for a little bit and once it came up a certain amount because um, I could have entered down here but I waited and we entered somewhere up here and then we pretty much took profit over here up here and which thank God because we took profit went to sleep and then woke up and this happened right the second crash the second stock market crash right it wasn't as bad as the first one but you know pretty bad so this is the thing about trading is that you can't expect a trend to, to continue forever right you can't expect that you have to understand you have to be fluid in the market you have to understand when the trend changes and you have to be very very open-minded and um, pretty much you have to move with the market you don't dictate where the market goes you just follow it and that's when you make profit right so um, whatever the market does I'm right behind it and if I can and if it's trending then I'm trading it right uh, so I don't just trade the US US 30 but this is my favorite instrument to trade so this is this is the reason why I wanted to go over it we had about 10 uh, great trades um, right really nice profitable trades in the last um, maybe more, maybe like 12 really nice profitable trades in the last three months just on US 30. And we also took, we pretty much, I pretty much called out like five to 10 trades a week in my signal room, in my VIP signal room. And we have about a, a 65 um, to 70% win rate uh, on great weeks. We, you know, 100% sometimes on a great week. Um, overall, it's about 65%. Uh, you know, including the bad weeks that, that everybody goes through in the market. Um, but even on those weeks, we keep uh, losses extremely small. And we only only end up losing about like 2 3% on a really, really bad week. Uh, just like this week, last uh, the last two weeks, the first week was terrible. And the second week, like this week that just passed, um, it was it was it was really bad too, but we still made a lot of profit on US 30. Um, just because whenever the market is bad, uh, whenever pairs are moving sideways, I just ignore them completely and don't even try to uh, trade them at all. So I don't trade at all when the market is consolidating or moving sideways. Um, I only trade uh, pairs that are trending, right? So we took that trade, we made uh, 602 pips profit on that trade. 
Uh, we were risking 265 pips on that one. Um, oh, no. No. Yeah, like 240. 240 pips on that one, I think. Um, then the market, remember, remember when I told you, whenever a trend line gets broken, you know, most likely prices is, is, is changing. Most likely the trend is changing. So uh, we saw this, we saw this huge bear candle, huge, huge. Like if you look at that, we haven't seen a candle that size, a four hour candle that size in, man, in years, in years. Now, I don't, I don't know the last time that I've seen that on US 30, right? So this tells me trend has changed, right? So what happens, right? We see that the trend does change. It starts to make lower highs, lower lows, lower highs, lower lows. So I didn't get in on this lower high because there was really nothing really, really telling me. Maybe um, maybe besides Fibonacci. I don't know if Fibonacci was, uh, I don't know. I'm not even going to plot the Fibonacci there. It doesn't matter. We didn't trade that. But we did trade this. So when price came up and made this uh, this uh, lower high right there because it was bouncing off this key zone uh, this very strong level of support and resistance in the past right this supply and demand zone so um, we sold from there we were aiming for 725 pips uh, on this trade and um, and we achieved that man this was a great great trade great trade we were risking 200 pips in total the risk reward ratio on this was 3.61%. Incredible. This was uh, the 8th of September that we entered. I uh, no no no. We uh, the yeah, the 8th of September that we entered that trade. Um, I usually like to trade US 30 around like 6 5 6 in the morning. Um, I don't know. I just found it to be very very powerful at that time. Uh, for me personally. But uh, yeah, so we achieved that level. We could have went lower, but uh, we but this was a very very key level this this right here right so we just took profit at that level and uh, we were not trying to push our luck right then uh, we were thinking about buying here at this level because of how powerful we knew that this level was um, and actually I might have bought I might have bought here in this area. I don't know. Maybe I, I think I bought over here in this area. Because we were still above this major, major trend line. Major trend line. This is a major trend line over here for US 30. So we were still above that. So I was still over here. We bought again. I don't remember that trade exactly. But we bought again. Most likely took profit somewhere around here. Um, oh, no. We took profit over here. So we bought somewhere around here and took profit over here. And then this huge fall happened over here. Huge. Honestly, I was expecting this to continue going up from here. I'm not going to lie. I was expecting US 30 to just hit record levels after that. But um, it wanted to keep falling. And that's the thing about uh, uh, pairs, but especially US 30. It's the stock market. It's very, very susceptible to news and to fundamental news and anything can happen any day and that this is why we always use stop losses this is why we always manage our risk because you just don't know um right so it usually it fell all the way from here right and then when it hit this level over here i was thinking about buying it but i just didn't it just wasn't feeling right it was way too bearish um i just didn't trust it Right, and it started consolidating over here. So that's 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 when I just like forgot about it for a week or so, and just let it do whatever it wanted to do. That's one of my favorite things is just to wait, and just to be patient, and just to let um, let it give you more information. Because the more candles that it prints, right, the more candles that get printed, the more candles that go by, the more time that goes by, the more information you get, and the more the more confident you are about what's happening and what and what um, price wants to do next, right? So pretty much I wanted to see a break below this level here because it was such a key level of uh, support and resistance, right? Also, I wanted to see a break below this very, very important trend line, which is exactly what happened, right? It broke below, and then when it, when it came back up to retest and that, that doji was made right there, I wanted to sell from there. I'm not going to lie. I wanted to sell from up here, but I didn't. 
I didn't because I, I just wasn't 100% sure yet. I needed it to be below this level here. I needed, I needed a, con a convincing break below that level. So I was trading other things at that time. And then, you know, once this came down, found some support and then came up. Right. And then it found some resistance over here. Then then we took this trade and this was an incredible trade. We were only risking 100 pips on this trade. This was a phenomenal trade. We were only risking 100 pips on this one. Um, and uh, yeah, we pretty much um, entered over here at this uh, support and resistance level. It didn't quite go up far enough into this zone like I wanted it to. But, you know, it bounced off of that level there. We didn't enter up there. We entered a lot lower than that, but it was still a great trade, right? Um, and then this right here was the very last trade that we just took yesterday. And this was a pretty much a 15-minute trade. Uh, we knew that um, that this thing was downtrending very, very hard. Uh, we knew that this was a key level on the four-hour, right? We had this, uh, this key level right here, right? And uh, if you go to the 15-minute, you see, I was pretty much trying to go to sleep at this point, right? And this happened over here where price bounced all the way down, right? And so once I saw that, I was like, yeah, this momentum is going to continue to the downside. This downtrend is going to continue. And uh, this is exactly what it wants to do, right? So once I saw price come back up and retest this level right here and make a doji right there, that's exactly when I said, okay, this is time. It's time. It's time for this to drop. So I got up off my bed. I couldn't go to sleep, um, and I was like, "All right, I'm, I'm just gonna trade." Um, so what ended up happening was uh, um, I missed my perfect entry up here, which I was looking to enter up here, which sucks. I missed like 40, 50 pips, but uh, we entered over here. Our stop loss was extremely tight extremely tight right right there right above that previous high right um at 53 pips let me tell you something that's not easy to achieve on 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 us 30 at all that's that you're a superhero um not to pat myself on the back but <laughs> you're a superhero if you can make that happen so yeah as soon as we entered man as soon as we entered this thing fell this thing fell it just fell, look at this. This was in the span of, literally, in the span of, man, in the span of an hour and 45 minutes, I'm just playing Call of Duty, um, watching this thing drop, and I'm just calling it in my Discord, I'm just calling it pip by pip, um, <laughs> 73 pips profit, 100 pips profit, um, two, already at 2%. 134 pips profit, 150 already at 3%, uh, 227 pips profit, already at 4.5% profit. Wow. This was an incredible trade. It, it doesn't always go that perfect, but this one did, right? So, um, yeah, so it dropped all the way down here. We were aiming for a huge take profit on this because I think I thought that this thing was going to drop all the way down, all the way down, but it didn't, right? So we ended up taking our profit somewhere around here because I told myself once if this level gets broken right here this little green lime green level right there because that's also a, level, a very strong level of support and resistance I, I knew that if it broke above that it was just going to keep going up so that's exactly what happened once it broke above we closed all of our positions at about 200 pips per, where were we uh, we closed pretty much at about like two yeah 200 pips profit and then it did exactly what I thought it was going to do. It skyrocketed. It broke above this trend line. Skyrocketed all the way up here. And yeah, the rest was history. The rest was history. And it started going crazy over here because of news. A whole bunch of USD news made it go nuts right here. Because um, I was looking to, to start buying it once I saw that the, that the trend changed. It also bounced off of this very strong level on the 4-hour. 
right? You see all these wicks right there. It just was not going below that level, and this is a this is a this is a very strong level. This is a twenty six six nine four level, right? This was a very strong level in the past, so I had it marked down already, and um, yeah, I was expecting it to break below that level, but it just didn't want to break. And once I saw this, I was like, okay, I'm ready to buy. So next week, um, the good news is that I, 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 this is bullish for me. I, I, I know that this trend line is going to get broken above. And then this trend line, and we're going to see what happens, but we're going to be buying this next week most likely. You know, we'll see. We'll see what it wants to do, but most likely this thing wants to go up. Um, but yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. That's pretty much um, the last three months of US 30 trades in my VIP signal room. Um, we've been extremely profitable in my VIP signal room for the last, uh, for the last uh, like five, five, six months. Uh, we've been killing it. Um, not even over exaggerating. We've been doing great. Um, yeah, we've been doing incredible. Um, like thou thousands of pips, thousands of pips. Just these trades right here in the last three months uh, definitely like six, seven, eight, maybe like, yeah, maybe like 8,000 pips just in total in these last like 10 p trades that I just showed you guys. Um, profit, right? After losses. Um, yeah, we've been absolutely killing it on US 30 and, and on a whole bunch of other, um, trades too, on a whole bunch of other pairs. But, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, if you want to join my VIP signal room, just send me a message. I'm going to link my email um, in the description. I'm also going to put my Instagram page if you want to um, follow me there. My Instagram is um, at J-E-I-D-F-X. So Jade FX. That's J-E-I-D-F-X. So yeah, follow me there. Um, as always, I appreciate you guys uh, for supporting. Um, and yeah, let's keep you know having these phenomenal weeks and months. And let's keep making profit. I'll see you guys next time. And as always, um, keep being patient and waiting for the absolute best trades. Take care, guys.